The story revolves around Emma, a beautiful woman who is on a mission guided by a man over the phone. After completing her task in Buenos Aires, Argentina, Emma removes her disguise and returns to her true appearance. Back at home, Emma is warmly welcomed by her two children. She shares with her husband Dave that she's just returned from a business trip to Nebraska, concealing the fact that she had actually been abroad. Emma also forgets that it's their seventh wedding anniversary, which fills her with guilt. The following morning, while preparing breakfast for her family, Emma receives a message from Raj, the person who always arranges her jobs. Raj informs her that her client is pleased with her work in Buenos Aires, and they have received payment for the job. However, Raj cautions Emma not to attract too much attention to herself, since her photo has resurfaced on a wanted list on a dark website. But luckily Raj has removed the bounty offer. He then assigns her a new task, but Emma declines, explaining that she has just returned home. Raj continues to urge Emma because the client insists on having the best person for the job. They even offer a substantial payment, enough to keep Emma safe from pursuit by Sovereign, a group known for posting bounties on dark websites. That evening, Dave suggests a vacation to celebrate their seventh wedding anniversary, but Emma declines, fearing she will let her family down again. She's made promises before, but always canceled. Dave then comes up with a plan and gives her a nurse costume for a romantic role play. However, Emma has different ideas. She invites Dave to meet her the next night at a bar, where they'll pretend to be different people using aliases. They plan to act as if they're meeting for the first time and book a luxurious hotel room there. In the morning, Emma shares her plan with Kelly, Dave's younger sister, and asks her to look after their children. That night, Emma arrives at the Royal Grand, a luxury hotel, for their date with Dave. Meanwhile, Dave gets stuck in traffic and loses signal when he tries to inform Emma about the delay. At the bar, Emma caught the attention of an older man who had been watching her. He tried to flirt and introduced himself as Bob Kellerman. Emma, who had been ignoring him, decided to use the name Alice Overby and claimed to be a financial worker. Bob continued to approach her until Dave finally arrived. Dave noticed that Emma seemed uninterested in Bob and was instead looking at a man in the corner of the bar who had just arrived. Dave excused himself briefly and introduced himself as Jack Dawson, using the alias while Emma assumed the role of Alice Overby. As Jack ordered a drink, Bob returned to their table and proudly shared that he had won a significant contract. He invited Alice and Jack to join in celebrating his achievement. After a few drinks, Bob gave them his room number, suggesting they continue the party there. When they reached the room, Emma played some music and asked Dave to wait in bed. While she claimed she needed to freshen up in the bathroom, it seemed she intentionally delayed. Dave ended up falling asleep, and Emma left a message on a piece of paper before checking her phone stopwatch as it turned out that Emma went to Bob's room. Bob was actually a hitman who had just eliminated a diplomat. He considered himself lucky to have spotted Anna Peller, the most wanted hit woman, right in front of him. Bob had given her his room number earlier, not to kill her, but because he was curious about why Anna had left the notorious hitman syndicate. Sovereign, the group that posted bounties, wanted Anna captured, not killed. It's revealed that Emma is actually a hit woman named Anna Peller, who used to work for a hitman group called Sovereign. She fled and changed her identity because Sovereign's leader, Gwen Carver, is hunting her down. They agreed to split the reward with 60% for Bob and 40% for Emma. Bob suggests they work together because he's not tied to any syndicate and only works for the highest bidder. He warns Emma that if she refuses, he'll contact Sovereign and claim the reward for her capture. Emma declines and reveals that Bob's drink at the bar was poisoned, and he'll soon succumb to it. As Emma was about to retrieve her weapon, Dave, who had awakened, called to inquire about Emma's whereabouts. However, suddenly, Bob, who had not yet died, but was only blinded by the poison, attempted to shoot her. After hanging up on Dave, Emma easily disposed of Bob. After completing her task, Emma returned to the room and resumed her intimacy with Dave. The next day, back at home with Dave and their children, Emma looked serious as she sent a message to Raj, informing him of what happened the previous night, and she ignored Dave's repeated inquiries. 
Shortly after, Raj called, leaving Dave increasingly curious about what Emma was keeping from him. Raj advised Emma not to attract too much attention because this incident would soon make headlines and Gwen Carver would likely discover Emma's location. Raj instructed Emma to head to the airport immediately. Inside the house, Dave received a call from Kelly, who told him about a murder at the Royal Grand Hotel and sent him a news link. Dave was shocked to see that the victim was the man they had spoken to at the bar last night. Panicking, Dave informed Emma that the news hinted that the police were suspicious of a couple, a man and a woman, seen with the victim. Though confident they were not the culprits, Dave wanted to contact the police before they could identify them from CCT footage. However, using fake identities at the hotel would only make them look more suspicious if they were considered suspects. Eventually, Dave abandoned his plan, and they decided to wait for the police to approach them first. Emma mentioned that she had to catch a local flight for an unplanned meeting at her office the next day. Dave initially objected since she had just returned, but he eventually agreed. The next day, after saying goodbye to their children, Dave informed Emma that he would pick her up at the domestic arrival terminal when she returned on Monday. Once Emma left, Dave continued to monitor the news about Bob's murder on social media. The police had found their photos from the hotel's CCTV footage, and it was only a matter of time before they were identified. Dave grew increasingly anxious and tried to contact Emma several times, but her phone remained inactive. On the day of Emma's scheduled return, she was nowhere to be found on any local flight departures. As Dave returned to the parking lot, his worst fear came true. Two detectives from the NYPD approached him and escorted him to the police station. They questioned Dave about the murder of Bob Kellerman at the Royal Grand Hotel and why he had used a fake name. Dave truthfully explained that he had just met Bob Kellerman and the fake name was simply part of a role-playing game he and his wife had been playing, pretending to be strangers. However, the detectives found this explanation hard to believe. Shortly after, an intelligence agent named Carver entered and informed Dave that his wife was not the real Emma Rayburn, which left him shocked. The woman who had been his wife had assumed the identity of a deceased person eight years ago and had successfully lived a false life for the past seven years. Photos of his wife at Buenos Aires Airport from the previous week were presented as evidence, making Dave realize that Emma had lied about going to Nebraska. He also discovered the true identity of the man he had met at the bar was Derek Worley, a hitman, not Bob Kellerman. Dave was even more stunned when he found out that Raj wasn't Emma's company supervisor, but the one who found clients for her as a hitwoman. Dave also uncovered that his wife was Anna Peller, the most sought-after hitwoman on multiple continents. At first, he thought it was some kind of joke, but it became clear that everyone in the room took it very seriously. Dave rushed back home and started searching for Emma's secret belongings, until eventually he found a hidden safe containing wigs, fake passports, and firearms. As more truths emerged, Dave began to doubt his wife, but wanted to talk to the woman he had married before making any decisions. He desperately searched for her and resisted Agent Carver's attempts to search their house and convince him of his wife's criminal activities. Meanwhile, in Berlin, several Sovereign members were tracking Emma as she tried to escape. Despite Emma's attempts to mislead them and her escape from Raj's car, they continued to follow her every move until she managed to disable one of them. Although she successfully escaped the confrontation with the remaining Sovereign members, Raj lost his life after being shot. On the other hand, after the police left, Dave reached out to every number on the business cards he found in Emma's secret safe. One of those numbers connected him to Emma and Dave, quickly discovered that Emma was in Berlin from that phone call. Ignoring Emma's warning not to join her in Berlin, he wanted to discuss the matter in person. Not long after, Emma and Dave were finally reunited at a bar in Berlin. Emma confessed her past to Dave, admitting her real name was Anna and she had been trained as an assassin since childhood. Her father, a former secret agent, started the private security company Sovereign with intelligence agent Wen Carver, the woman who introduced Dave to Emma's true identity. Carver took Anna with her after her father was killed, 
Anna had experienced violence from a young age and received years of training to kill. She initially believed in Carver's mission, thinking she was fighting crime by eliminating evil people. However, as she grew older, Anna realized it was all lies. While Anna was on a job in Boston, she met Dave, who made her feel appreciated and cared for the first time. From that moment on, Anna longed for a normal life. She only took occasional jobs to finance her family's protection from Sovereign's pursuit. Despite all the lies she had told, Anna begged Dave to believe that her love for him had always been genuine. She had come to Berlin to obtain Canadian passports for Dave and the children to start anew. Emma promised that once they resolved their issues with Sovereign, she would never want to be a hit woman again. Even after learning everything about his wife, Dave said he still loved her. However, their reunion was interrupted when several Sovereign members suddenly arrived, surrounded them, drugged Emma, and took them away. When Emma regained consciousness, she realized Carver had not only kidnapped her and Dave, but also their two children. Carver offered Emma a second chance to rejoin Sovereign. Emma reluctantly agreed, with the condition that Carver wouldn't harm her children. Carver accepted and instructed Emma to eliminate Dave because he stood in the way of Emma, and Carver will bring their children in Sovereign. Emma then led Dave into the woods and informed him that a sniper was watching them. As they walked, Emma contemplated her plan. Suddenly, she shot Dave, causing him to collapse. Another Sovereign member confirmed Dave's supposed death, as Emma had killed him. While the woman checked Dave's body, Emma attacked her when a tree obstructed the sniper's view. After Emma killed the woman, Dave regained consciousness. It turned out that Emma's shot had caused only minor injuries. Emma also managed to eliminate the sniper while he searched for her. Emma and Dave quietly approached the building where their children and Carver were located. After taking down another guard, Emma and Dave divided their tasks. Dave would rescue their children, while Emma would confront Carver. Inside the Sovereign building, Emma faced off against Carver's remaining henchwoman in a challenging confrontation. Until Emma emerged victorious. On the other hand, Carver, who was attempting to escape, was taken by surprise when she encountered Emma. Instead of finishing Carver off immediately, Emma shot her in a critical spot and slowly moved away from the scene. She returned to the building to reunite with her small family, demonstrating her willingness to risk her life to protect them, even if it meant sacrificing her own. After enduring several exhausting days, Emma was relieved to see her children safe and to return to their normal family life as before. Moral lesson from the story, it's better to be honest with your loved ones, even if you have secrets to hide, because pretending to be someone else in a fancy hotel can lead to more trouble than just forgetting your wedding anniversary.